Yorkshireman Dave Carver served Cardiff City with pride and consistency during his six years at Ninian Park. And the man who played key roles in manager Jimmy Schooler's promotion-chasing Bluebirds team of the late 1960s and early 1970s is at a landmark time in his life. Carver was born during May 1944 and on the 16th of the month celebrates his 80th birthday. His playing career lasted 13 years, starting with his local club Rotherham United and ending back in South Yorkshire at Doncaster Rovers. The solid, highly reliable defender loved playing football and revealed a few years ago, I can honestly say the happiest time of my career was at Rotherham United. After all, I was a local boy. That's everything. Carver also loved his time at Cardiff City and speaks warmly about his six seasons in South Wales. He describes them as a fantastic time in his playing days. He mentioned teammates, passionate Bluebirds fans and the Cardiff City team challenging for honours and promotion to the top tier in English football. Unfortunately, they didn't quite make it to Division 1 during his time at the club, but they did win the Welsh Cup a number of times. Carver also has positive memories of the hugely successful fullback partnership he had with Gary Bell at Cardiff City. Schooler's team challenged consistently for a promotion to Division 1, the top tier, and they also won the Welsh Cup in four consecutive seasons with Carver in the lineup. Captain Don Murray's Bluebirds were a well organised unit under Schooler, with a back four comprising Carver, Harris, Leighton Phillips, or Brian Harris, plus Bell. City supporter Paul Evans, a long serving fan who fell in love with his local club during the early 1960s, said in his Mauve and Yellow Army blog a few years ago that he rated Schooler's 1970 71 team as the best Cardiff City team he has seen up to that point. Carver played in all four Welsh League Cup Carver played in all four Welsh Cup finals between 1968 and 1971, each decided over home and away legs when City lifted the trophy following wins against Hereford United, Swansea City, Chester and Wrexham. The dependable defender also played of course in the 1971 European Cup Winners Cup 1-0 first leg victory against Real Madrid at Ninian Park. He was in Cardiff City's back four when they travelled to Spain for the second leg. More than 60,000 spectators were at the Bernabeu Stadium for the return game against Cardiff and home manager Miguel Munez had his team fired up for the clash. Madrid-born Munez, a former Real Madrid player, led the club to two European Cup successes and nine La Liga titles during his time in charge. He also managed Spain's national team for six years and led them to the final of Euro 84. The referees who took charge of the Cardiff City v Real Madrid matches were Vital Loro from Charleroi in Belgium at Ninian Park and Slovakian Karol Sarka from Bratislava in the return. Brian Clark, of course, scored City's winner in the first game, while second-half goals netted by international players Paraguay-born striker Sebastian Miranda and Spanish midfield man Manuel Villaverde earned the Spanish team overall victory. Carver made 269 league appearances for Cardiff City and earned, four, earned those four Welsh Cup winners' medals. He was born in the village of Wickersley, three miles from Rotherham Centre, spent six years in South Wales and was a solid, uncompromising right-back. Bluebirds manager Schooler paid an £11,000 transfer fee when he signed Carver from his local club Rotherham during January 1966. Carver occasionally played on the left side of defence with Bell on the right and the pair were almost in inevitably in the City team when they were regular promotion challenges between 68 and 71. Schooler's boys finished 5th, 7th and 3rd in those seasons. The Bluebirds missed out behind champions Derby County and runners-up Crystal Palace in 1968-69, while Charlton Athletic and Middlesbrough were third and fourth. In the following season, Huddersfield Town and Blackpool moved into the top tier, while City, in seventh, were only four points behind runners-up Poole. 
City went even closer in 7071 when Carver and Bell missed only one league game between them. Leicester were Division 2 champions, ahead of second place Sheffield United, who were three points ahead of the Bluebirds. Former winger Bell provided the attacking flair from his side and was tenacious in defence, while Carver was excellent in carrying out his defensive duties at fullback, solid and de- efficient in the tackle. Manager Schooler admired Carver's versatility. Dave was comfortable in either fullback role, and the gaffer occasionally utilised the reliable defender in a more central man to man marking role. City supporter Evans recalls watching Carver close down former England international Rodney Marsh during his best days at Queen's Park Rangers. Both Carver and Marsh are due to celebrate their 80th birthdays this year. They stayed tight whenever Cardiff faced Queen's Park Rangers. Marsh would try hard to lose his marker while Carver stuck doggedly and relentlessly to his task and frustrated the R's playmaker. Carver was ever present for back-to-back seasons while playing for the Bluebirds and 117 of his 210 City League appearances were consecutive. His big moment in front of goal came during a second division match against Leicester City at Ninian Park during 1970-71 when he fired past Peter Shilton from close range in the last minute. That match against title-chasing Foxes, Foxes, who were eventually crowned champions, was televised live by Match of the Day and ended 2 all in front of almost 26,000 spectators. That was Carver's only goal for Cardiff City. He had started his career in the apprentice ranks at Rotherham United and went on to make more than 300 Football League appearances During 1972, Carver joined Swansea for a short loan, making three appearances, before moving to Hereford United on a free transfer. In 1974, he returned to South Yorkshire and ended his professional playing days at Doncaster Rovers. After retiring from his playing days, Carver ran public houses in Yorkshire, Norwich and Cambridge. He is now retired and lives in Winterton-on-Sea, East Anglia. Dave Carver's Welsh Cup victories with the Bluebirds. Uh, Let's have a look at Dave Carver's Welsh Cup victories with the Bluebirds. In 67-68, they won 2-0 at Edgar Street against Hereford in front of 5,422 spectators and then won the second leg 4-1. There were 6,030 spectators at Ninian Park. That gave Cardiff a 6-1 aggregate victory. Author and Cardiff City fan Dave Collins, who attended the second leg at Ninian Park, his, f- his first ever live Bluebirds. Author and Cardiff City fan Dave Collins, who attended the second leg at Ninian Park for what was his first ever live Bluebirds match, at the age of nine years old, he said during the 1967-68 season, former Cardiff City player John Charles had been appointed Hereford United player manager. The big man had a two, twofold ambition for his new club to steer the Bulls into the Football League and win the Welsh Cup. Personally, I was mesmerised by the sights, sounds and smells of that my first night at Ninian Park. An army of comrades huddled together beneath the night sky. Enormous floodlights which stretched high into the darkness, shining their beams down on the huge cavernous stands. A strange media centre known as Radio Ninian occupied the far corner. A special boys enclosure at the front seemed to be inches from the goal and the pitch itself. TV cameras sat on a gantry above our heads while wooden benches filled the giant canton stand behind the goal. This was the evening John Toshak, Don Murray and more took their place in my life. For my father, though there was only one man out there, Finest player I ever saw, greatest player of all time, he he would tell me. These were the lines I remembered that first night, and I was hooked on Cardiff City. Charles earned two Welsh Cup winners' medals with Cardiff in 1963 and 1964, but his dream of lifting the trophy with Hereford did not come true. Carver played in both legs of final, while Hereford included Bluebirds Bluebirds player, 
Carver played in both legs of the final, while Hereford included former Bluebirds player David Summerhays, who, during the mid-1960s, was the first substitute ever used by the Bluebirds. In 1968-69, Swansea Town and Cardiff City met in the final. The Bluebirds won 3-1 at the Vetchfield, with 10,000-plus fans in the ground, when John Toshak scored twice and Mel Nurse, unfortunately, put the ball into his own net. City Slickers give Swansea a roasting was the evening post headline after Cardiff's win. The reporter said Cardiff went about their task with the thoroughness of a demolition squad. The Bluebirds led 3-0 at half-time and 20-year-old Toshak had scored twice, both headers. Tosh nodded home from a Frank Sharp delivery before Swans captain Mel Nurse turned the ball into his own net and then Toshak headed in from a Don Murray free kick. In the second leg, Cardiff City won 2-0 in front of 12,617 fans. Toshak was again on target and Leslie Lee was their other scorer. Toshak scored a headed goal after 33 minutes, but there was still hope for Swansea because the tie was to be decided on points rather than goals. Lee added the second from a Toshak assist. The team that night was uh, Di Davies, Steve Derrett, David Carver, Peter King, Don Murray, Brian Harris, Frank Sharp, Brian Clark, Leslie Lee, Toshak and Barry Jones. In 1969-70, Chester City were the opponents in the Welsh Cup final. In the first leg at Sealand Road, the attendance was 3,087 and Cardiff City won 1-0 thanks to Ronnie Bird's goal. The second leg was a little more comfortable with Cardiff City winning 4-0 in front of 5,567 fans. Bobby Woodruff, Ronnie Bird, Leslie Lee and Brian Clark scored those goals. The Bluebirds had defeated Swansea City 2-0 in a semi-final replay to qualify for the final against Chester. Cardiff and the Swans had drawn 2 all to force the replay. FIFA referee Clive Thomas Triorki from Tri Triorki. FIFA referee Clive Thomas from Triorki took charge of both legs in the final. Fourth Division Chester could not contain Cardiff City, who had finished seventh in Division Two under Schooler, and the Bluebirds earned a solid victory and lifted the trophy again. In 1970-71, Wrexham were the opponents, and the first leg was at the racecourse in North Wales in front of 14,008 people. Cardiff won 1-0 with Bobby Woodruff scoring. In the second leg, City were 3-0 winners, it, with 7,000 people attending at Ninian Park. Ian Gibson scored two, and Bird was again a scorer. That made Cardiff City 4-0 aggregate winners. The team that night was Jim Eady, Dave Carver, Gary Bell, Mel Sutton, Don Murray, Leighton Phillips, Peter King, Ian Gibson, Brian Clark, Bobby Woodruff, Ronnie Bird and Brian Harris was substitute. Wrexham, of course, included future Cardiff City manager Eddie May in their team for the 71 final. May had two spells in the Ninian Park manager's office during the 1990s. Well, that's it for now, talking about Dave Carver. I wish him a happy birthday later this uh, later in May and hope he has a great day at Winterton-on-Sea in Norfolk. Happy birthday, Dave.